Islam. It is April the 28th, 2019. I am Manizabro Gray Bay. I'm a Hebrew Muslim of Moorish descent. And today I'll be reading First Public Law 97 280 on October 4th, 1982. Joint resolution authorizing and requesting the president to proclaim 1983 as the year of the Bible. Whereas the Bible, the Word of God, has made a unique contribution in shaping the United States as a distinctive and blessed nation and people. Whereas deeply held religious convictions bringing from the Holy Scriptures led to, near, led to the early settlement of our nation. Whereas biblical teachings inspired concepts of civil government that are contained in our Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, whereas many of our great national leaders, among them Presidents Washington, Jackson, Lincoln, and Wilson, paid tribute to the surpassing influence of the Bible in our country's development, as in the words of President Jackson, that the Bible is the rock on which our republic rests, whereas the history of our nation clearly illustrates the value of voluntarily applying the teachings of the scriptures in the lives of individuals, families, and societies. Whereas this nation now faces great challenges that will set this nation as it has never <laughs> been tested before. And whereas renewing our knowledge of and faith in God through holy scriptures can strengthen us as a nation and a people, now therefore be it. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled that the President and author that the President is authorized and requested to designate 1983 as a national year of the Bible. In recognition of both the formative influence the Bible has been for our nation and our national need to study and apply the teachings of the Holy Scriptures, approved October 4th, 1982. And next I'll be reading 1930, the 1933 Legislative Journal, House page 5759, resolution number 75. Mr. Whitkin, Mr. Speaker, I desire at this time to call upon resolution number 75, printers number 1034. The resolution was read by the clerk as follows. In the House of Representatives, April 17, 1933, many sons and daughters of the proud and handsome race, which inspired the architecture of Northern Africa and carried into Spain an influence of its artistic temperaments, have become citizens of this nation. In the city of Philadelphia, there exists a Moorish American society made up of Moors, who has found here the end of the request for a home and of the children of those who journeyed here from the plains of Morocco. This society has done much to bring about a thorough absorption by these people of those principles which are, nece which are necessary to make them good American citizens. These Moorish Americans have since being here missed the use of the titles and name annexations that were so familiar at home, which are used in accordance with the doctrines of the religious faith to which they are adherents therefore be it. Resolved that this house commenced the Moorish American Society of Philadelphia for the efficient service it has rendered the nation in bringing about a speedy and thorough Americanization of these former Moors, and that in accordance with the fullest right of religious independence, guaranteed every citizen we recognize also the right of these people to use the names of fixes, name of fixes Il or Ali or Bey, or any other prefix or suffix at which they have heretofore been accustomed to, use or which they may hereafter acquire the right to use. On the question will the House adopt this adopt the resolution, it was adopted May 4, 1933. Alright, and next I'll be reading the 13th Amendment of the Constitution with 20 sections, ratified November 18, 1865, by three fourths of the several states. Section 1. 
all persons shall have the right peaceably to assemble and worship God according to the dic dictates of their own conscience. Section 2. The use of the public press shall not be obstructed, but criminal publications made in one state against the lawful institutions of another state shall not be allowed. Section 3. The right of citizens to free and lawful speech in public assemblies shall not be denied. Access of citizens to the ballot box shall not be obstructed either by civil or military power. That reminds me, remember how earlier you were saying words that we're not supposed to say? We don't vote. We, um... Yeah. Hmm? We, um, submit a ballot. The right of citizens to free and lawful speech in public assemblies shall not be denied. Access of citizens to the ballot box shall not be obstructed either by civil or military power. The military shall always be subordinate to the existing judicial authority over citizens. The privilege of the writ habeas corpus shall never be suspended in the presence of a judicial authority. Section 4. The militia of a state or of the United States shall not be employed to invade the lawful rights of the people of any of the several states. But the United States shall not be hereby deprived of the right and power to defend and protect its property and rights within the limits of any of the states. Section 5. Persons held to service or labor for life in any state under the laws thereof may be taken into any territory of the United States south of north latitude 36 degrees 30. And the right to such services or labor shall not be impaired thereby, and the territorial legislature thereof shall have the exclusive right to make and shall make all needful rules and regulations for the protection of such right and also for the protection of such persons. But Congress or any territorial legislature shall not have power to impair or abolish such right of service in the said territory while in a territorial condition without the consent of all the states south of said latitude which maintain such service. Section 6. Involuntary servitude, except for crime, shall not be permanently established within the district set apart from the seat of government of the United States. But the right of sojourn in such district, which persons held to service or labor, shall not be denied. When any territory of the United States, south of north latitude 36 degrees 30, shall have a population equal to the ratio of representation for one member of Congress, and the people thereof shall have formed a constitution for a republican form of government, and shall be admitted as a state into the Union, on an equal footing with the other states, and the people may in such constitution either prohibit or sustain the right to involuntary labor or service, and alter or amend the constitution of their will. Section 8. The present right of representation in Section 2, Article 1 of the Constitution shall not be altered without the consent of all the states maintaining the right to involuntary service or labor south of latitude 36 degrees 30. But nothing in its Constitution or its amendments shall be construed to deprive, to deprive any state south of said latitude 36 degrees 30 of the right of abolishing involuntary servitude at its will. Section 9. The regulation and control of the right to labor or service in any of the states south of latitude 36 degrees 30 is hereby recognized to be exclusively the right of each state within its own limits. And this constitution shall not be altered or amended to impair this right of each state without its consent, provided the article shall not be construed to absolve the United States from rendering assistance to suppress insurrections or domestic violence when called upon by any state, as provided in Section 4, Article 4 of this Constitution. Section 10. No state shall pass any law in any way interfering with or obstructing the recover of fugitives from justice or from labor or service or any law of Congress made under Article 4, Section 2 of this, of this Constitution. And all laws in violation of this section may, on complaint made by any person or state, be declared void by the Supreme Court of the United States. 
section 11 as a right of comity between the several states south of latitude 36 degrees 30 the right of transit with persons held to involuntary labor or service from one state to another shall not be obstructed but such persons shall not be brought into the state north of said latitude section 12 the traffic in slaves from africa is hereby forever pro prohibited on pain of death and the forfeiture of all the rights and property of persons engaged therein, and the descendants of Africans shall not be citizens. Section 13. Alleged fugitives from labor or service or request shall have a trial by jury before being returned. Section 14. All alleged fugitives charged with crime committed in violation of the law of a state shall have the right of trial by jury and if such person claims to be a citizen of another state shall have a right of appeal or of a writ of error to the supreme court of the united states section 15 all acts of any inhabitant of the united states tending to incite persons held to service or labor to insurrection or acts of domestic violence or to abscond are here are here try prohibited i think that's supposed to be by are hereby prohibited and declared to be a penal offense and all the courts of the united states shall be open to suppress and punish such offenses at the suit of any citizen of the United States or the suit of any state. Section 16. All conspiracies in any state to interfere with lawful right with lawful rights in any state, in any other state, or against the United States shall be suppressed. And no state or the people thereof shall withdraw from the Union without the consent of three fourths of all the states. Ex expressed by an amendment proposed and ratified in the manner provided in Article 5 of the Constitution. Section 17. Whenever any state wherein a voluntary servitude is recognized or allowed shall propose to abolish such servitude and shall apply for pecuniary assistance therein, the Congress may, in its discretion, grant such relief not exceeding $100 for each person liberated, but Congress shall not propose such abolishment and or relief to any state. Oh. Congress may assist free persons of African descent to emigrate and colonize Africa. Congress may, in its discretion, grant such relief, not exceeding $100 for each person liberated. I think that's redundant. Yeah, it is. Okay. Section 18. Duties on imports on imports may be imposed for revenue, but shall not be excessive or prohibitory in amount. When all the several states shall have abolished slavery, then and thereafter slavery or involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime shall never be established or tolerated in any of the states in the territories of the United States, and they shall be forever free. Section 20. The provisions of this article relating to involuntary labor or servitude shall not be altered without the consent of all the states maintaining such servitude. It's long. That was section 20, or all 20 sections of 1320, 13th Amendment with 20 sections.